The following video has been approved by the Jetty marketing team. The video has been rated Jetty. The following video may not be suitable for all viewers. G'day mate, welcome to Dyson Sphere program with me, Jetty. Today, we're gonna go through some important questions because I've been streaming DSP over on Twitch and I've had a lot of people swing by my live streams and ask me the same question over and over. So I thought, it's time for a video. It's time for a video. Let's go through this once and all, once and for all. Let's explain it in the best way I possibly can rather than having to talk through it without the props in front of me. So we're gonna go through the transportation hub. Uh, being the planetary logistics station, the interstellar logistics station, and we'll even do the orbital collector for the gas giants thrown in there as well. A uh, couple of things uh, I should mention is the planetary logistics station actually had an update in the last 12, 24 hours, and you'll see it now has a little note there at the bottom, only now enables delivery around its own planet, because a lot of people were getting confused with this one. Uh, so, before we go too much further, let's look at research really quickly because you are definitely going to need some research to unlock these. You're going to need this particular research, okay? The interplanetary, intraplanetary logistics system. Yep, I made the very first mistake when I first tried to get these things up and running, which is going to require some titanium. You're going to have to fly across to your titanium planet manually. You're going to have to pick up some titanium manually, okay? It's just part of business. On top of that, to get to the interstellar one, the one will actually move things between both planets and between solar systems. You're going to need the interstellar logistics system, which does require structural matrices, which will require, guess what? More titanium. So you're going to have to make sure you bring back heaps of titanium, and I'm talking like fill your inventory probably twice over to bring back in enough titanium to get uh, the structural matrices researched. You're going to need uh, 120 here, plus you're going to need another 80 here because you also need the titanium alloy to both make the building itself and also make the logistics vessels. Uh, but with that said, let's go and actually look at the building. So, uh, first thing we need to do is we need to look at a planetary logistics station. So we're gonna drop one of these here, and you know what, I'll drop another one right here, nice and close to one another, so we can demonstrate how they work together. So, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find something to ship from one to the other. Uh, uh, looking at my inventory, we're gonna use Iron, iron looks like a good example. We're gonna throw all the iron I have physically in there. Now, that is one of the options. The other option you do have is you could use some belt and ship items in on belts with a storage container right there. A... Come on. And throw the copper in there and we'll just shove that straight in. But as you can see, it hits the front of the building and nothing happens because my logistics station isn't actually selected to have copper. So if I set this to copper, we can now see copper is flying in. It's going to slowly fill up with whatever copper I can feed it into the system. Okay. Uh, so first, first station is automatically set to supply. Okay. This is how it defaults to supply. There are other options. There is a demand and a storage. Storage, I am yet to find out what it does. Uh, it doesn't matter what I set it to, it just has no sort of effect. I think it is literally, as a storage container, don't send bots to pick up these items, don't send these bots to, don't send, let bots leave to transport these items. It seems like it just becomes a giant storage chest, um, which is probably a little bit unfortunate. But these automatically default to supply, okay? Over here, we would like to have the iron obviously delivered from this station on the left to this station on the right. To do that, we have to set it to a demand, okay? So once it's set to a demand, we should have our drones flying stuff from one to the other. Now, drones. Drones are a little bit a uh, little bit special, a little bit interesting. So if I put in some drones at this end, uh, let's just move that out there. And can I just split that stack, please? Uh, thank you. We'll put 11 in there. And as you can see, the drones are gonna start taking material from this end and dropping off at this end, okay? If there's drones in this end, obviously they can take any materials at this end and fly them to, a, to another point. It's not like Factorio, where they're all part of one giant network. Each individual station has its own robots that it can transport materials to any other station, okay? 
if you have drones in this end and we'll set up we will remove our drones from this end uh, actually let's put just one in this end there we go uh, if we go to here and let's put the whole 21 in this end and close and I set this to copper you can see because oh no copper with a demand you can see because I have 21 drones at this end they're gonna leave this end go over here pick up as much copper plate as they can can carry bring it back same story we had our one drone in here which is a supply drone it can also leave and take the copper across there so technically you don't have to have uh, drones in every single uh, supply station or demand station you could opt to just put them in your demand stations you could opt to just put them in your supply stations or you could just cover your bases and put them in every station which is what I've been doing okay next up we have uh, the bigger and better brother the interplanetary going the interplanetary logistics station okay he's a little bit bigger He's a little bit nastier, he's a little bit uglier, and takes a little bit longer for a bot to fly all the way up there to drop him off. And again, he needs power. So, we might see that down here, these guys have like a battery. This is like an accumulator charge, okay? It is a, a battery that it can put into the logistics drones for them to fly A to B to C to D. Over here, we can see that this guy has a slightly larger battery, because he also has the little drones on top of that he also has the bigger logistic vessels okay now i'm going to need to transport something across so we're going to go with copper and i'm going to go with two options now i have a local supply and a local storage uh, well a local supply local demand and the storage option which like i said doesn't seem to work and also a remote option so if i go for local demand we should have uh nope all the copper's in here in a demand station. So if I change that to supply, we can now remove the copper from there to there. And let's do our iron as well. Uh, set that up for a local demand. And we'll even come here and set that up for storage. On the off chance, nothing happens. Uh, set that to supply as well. We can fly things around the little stations and then into a bigger station if we want. On top of that, we can actually ship things interplanetary. So let's use belts because I happen to have a lot of belts in my inventory. Uh, done. There's now 3,000 belts in there. And that's step one. Step two is I need to provide it some of these ships. So we're going to give you just four ships to start off. And you might notice there are now four ships up here on the ring. Let's pull them back out. Uh, can I please have four ships? Yeah. And go away. Uh, pop them there and yes, they actually park on the outside of the ring. So they're so big they don't actually park on the inside and then we need to obviously these default to a local supply and a remote supply you can remote demand remote storage as well. We need to obviously request those belts elsewhere. So let's go for a quick jump back into space and find my home planet which is here somewhere. There it is, right there, nice and close, after you just orientate yourself. So we'll go do a superhero landing on home planet, and we'll request some belt across. Nailed it, nailed it 100%, lost all the frames on the way in. Okay, uh, yeah, the game does not like you hitting the planet surface at 2,000 meters per second. It, it, it has a little bit of a blump. Uh, especially when you have as much stuff as I have on the planet rendering at the same time. Okay, so we're going to set up a logistics station at this end. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to set up what we want the materials to be brought across. So we're going to set up belt, obviously, which automatically defaults to a local supply and a remote supply. So again, local supply, well, remote means go get it from somewhere else in the solar system. Okay, or potentially the galaxy we'll cover that in a minute and local supply means ship it around inside this planet so actually my we'll cover it in a second but we'll go find my titanium and i have one of these stations bringing in titanium and then it's actually shipped around from that station by the smaller drones to elsewhere on the planet so we're going to do a remote demand and as you can see our ships start taking off now my ships actually carry 600 items each so they carry a hefty amount of material. Uh, same time, let's throw... Go away, go away, go away. Let's throw those guys up there. And I'm willing to bet one will lift off. Yep, because I have a little bit more than 
2,400 in this station. And if we go out to map view real quick, we can see those guys coming in right now, which will come and land right down the middle. Come on, there's one. There's two. There's three and four. They'll land right down the middle, they'll drop off the materials, and then they'll fly back home. Okay, they run completely on electricity, no fossil fuels required, which is great because, you know, you don't want to be spending too many too much fuel feeding these guys. And as you can see, now I have uh, I now have the belts that have been moved from the other planet back to this planet. So, a couple of other things we want to cover. Uh, let's just do a quick fly across the planet. Yes, I have been streaming this on Twitch quite a lot. We've had a lot of questions come up on the Twitch streams. So, this is where a lot of these this, this is where a lot of these tutorial videos are born. Uh, so, if you're got questions you can come swing by my, my twitch stream whenever you want that is twitch.tv slash jetty plays and click the follow button come tune in for for live yeah come tune in to watch me live we're at 32 plus hours in this playthrough we're actually going have gone interstellar now we're in a whole different sun yes uh trying to colonize a new planet so lots to do there uh if i'm not live and you still have questions you can't catch me live and ask me there you can always jump in our discord server we have like 2000 plus members already on the discord server happy to answer questions about satisfactory factorio oxygen not included dyson sphere it's a very active community very very helpful people always ha happy to help out new members okay so over here as you can see i'm remotely demanding in uh both the titanium uh the silicon so from the two different planets that you have to normally go conquer one for titanium one for silicon i'm bringing in those two materials i'm also bringing in fire ice which we'll get to in just a second but we can have a perfect example of that little bot there is actually flying the silicon out so i'm bringing in the silicon by one of these larger vessels and then i'm actually using the tiny little uh logistics drones to fly the silicon out and go away uh we can see one's going that way and one's going that way wherever he went we're actually flying the silicon too multiple dif different locations around the map or around the base uh, to run multiple different builds. Uh, same with my titanium. My titanium comes into here first and then we're using the smaller drones to actually fly it around th this map to do lots of different things. Uh, lastly, the last thing I probably should cover is the orbit collector, the one that goes and covers the gas giants. We have had many, many questions about those as well. So let's just jump back into sail mode, find our gas giant. Let's get a little bit more height. There it is. Okay. Your gas giant. Oh, come on, mouse. There we go. Your gas giant. Can we get the sunny side, please? That'll probably do us. All right. Gas giant. First things first. This is probably the most important thing. Uh, these large... Well, gas giant. First off, you can't land. It's very important. You cannot land on the gas giant. So make sure you have plenty of fuel uh make sure you have a fuel that recharges faster than you sitting around hovering because you're never going to land you're always going to be burning fuel and when i first visited my gas giant i actually ran out i had fuel but i couldn't burn it fast enough to recharge my batteries to take off it was slightly embarrassing we had to re-roll well we had to load a save anyway uh over here and unfortunately thanks son uh over here, we already have some of these orbit collectors uh, set up. Now, your gas giants, if we go out to map view, we can see they have fire, ice, hydrogen, and because it gives you a per second rate, they're actually infinite resources. So you can suck this baby dry. Uh, hydrogen is, of course, fuel. Uh, fire ice is a rare resource. Uh, if we go into a replicator, in my case, it actually gives me a different recipe for graphene which also has an output of hydrogen which is more fuel to burn so i definitely don't have any power problems uh but as we can see we have a couple of these placed around the planet and first off very important things uh that we have to do this at night uh first off these have to be placed on the equator okay they have to be placed on the equator cannot be placed anywhere else uh if you hold the mouse button anywhere on the planet it will say only on the equator very important thing so use your coordinates down here make sure you're looking at these to make sure you're at the equator you know zero zero is what you're looking for 
So keep making those numbers go down till they go to zero, zero. Then you should be good. On top of that, you can place multiple of these things, okay? If you plan on harvesting the planet dry, whack down as many of these things you, as you want. Now, after a bot flies up all the way up there to place that down. Okay, we can see that this starts, cons uh, starts sucking up the gas giant into the bottom. One, fueling itself to make sure it doesn't crash in the planet. Two, it starts storing these materials. Now, this automatically defaults to local storage and remote supply. It doesn't matter. Well, actually, it turns out we can change that from remote storage to... Yeah, okay. Uh, it doesn't matter too much, okay? The important thing is these are literally a set and forget. You can fly around, you can drop these all over your gas giant and not worry about them too much, okay? They'll automatically collect the two materials you have there. And then as time progresses, as they slowly fill up, you can then have the interplanetary... Uh, where are we? These guys, the logistics vessel, come over and pick them up. Now, you might notice that there might be some room across the top to to put on some uh, logistics vessels, but there's no room in the actual inventory to place them down. That is because you cannot place them down, okay? It is very, very much designed as a, you have ships come from the other end to come here and pick them up, okay? Very, very simple. On top of that, as for placing multiple of them, as you can see, you definitely can, but the catch is you, they need to be one very large square apart. Okay, so it's always too close, always too close till I get one full, uh, full large grid, grid tile away. And then I can put down a second one, a third one, a fourth one, and hell, let's even put down a fifth one. Okay, and with that, they will slowly suck up the gas giant. As I said, it's an infinite resource, so go nuts. It's going to give you a whole bunch of hydrogen hydrogen, deuterium, whatever your gas giant happens to have that you can take home and burn off. Actually, is this a... Mine's an ice giant. Okay, it's not ice giant, it's a gas giant. It's not a gas giant, it's an ice giant. We got there eventually. Um, but as you can see, I have so much hydrogen currently that hydrogen is definitely not an issue anymore. Anyway, with all that said, this is where I'm going to leave the video. Myself and Incarus are going to fly home. Yes, fly home and go and continue upgrading our Dyson Swarm. If you have any more questions, you have any 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 suggestions for future tutorial videos that you'd like to see, by all means, leave, leave them down in the comment section below or jump on my Discord, leave them there uh, as well. Uh, lastly, if you found this video helpful, please click the like button. And if you're new here, click the subscribe button on the way out. And thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed. I do hope you found this helpful. And I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, bye.